We welcome George Stoya III from Sooner Scoop, fresh off the Red River rivalry. Welcome back, George. And and how different is Norman now than it was when you left it? Yeah, yeah people are excited, Andy. Um, you can feel the juice, right? I mean, you could feel it in Dallas last night, you know, going out um, in, in downtown last night. People were pretty excited. Uh, you know, being back here today, you can tell people are excited. But yeah, I mean, OU ranked number five in the country coming off of uh, the biggest win of the Brent Venables era, obviously. Um, one of the biggest wins, honestly, in recent history for OU, considering the situation and the trajectory of the program, where it's been and where it was a year ago. Uh, so people are, are pretty excited about the Sooners right now. Well, let's talk about Venables because you're right. It is definitely the biggest win since he took over. How does this change how he's perceived as Oklahoma's head coach? Yeah, it, it Alex accelerates what the project was, right? I think that everyone at Oklahoma when he was hired knew that this was going to be somewhat of a process. And, and especially after last season, it was like, okay, this is going to take some time to build this back up. Now it accelerates it, right? I mean, now all of a sudden you're talking about maybe making the college football playoff in just his second season, winning a Big 12 title, which... I think, uh, you know, fans would say, yeah, that's the expectation this year. But a lot of us here locally was like, hey, just win nine games, you know, yeah. win nine games. And that's a successful season. So uh, I, I think that this just accelerates it. I think it also just shows that he it, it's a validation of what he's built this thing on. And, and he's always said sort of the right things. Right. And he's always gone out and recruited the right players, it seems. Uh, but for them to go in and be a really good Texas team uh, and really kind of dominate that game until the fourth quarter. Uh, was just super impressive, and I think that it, it now just people are, are are validated in that Brent is the guy uh, for Oklahoma. And Dylan Gabriel is the guy as well. I know that there's always been talk this year about, oh, Jackson Arnold, five-star freshman, but Dylan Gabriel was the best quarterback on the field in Dallas, and I would say if not for his legs, they don't win that game. It seems like that's what really kept Texas's defense off balance. Definitely. He was spectacular on Saturday. And, and you're right. Coming into the game, despite how well he's played this season, there was a lot of skepticism, even among OU fans, that can he win the big game? And we, when we've seen it throughout his career, he hasn't won the big game. And he's, he's lost a lot of games to top 25 teams, let alone a top five team in Texas. And in, in that environment, Andy, as you know, it's one of the best in college football for him to go in play with poise. I, I thought he was really good in the pocket at times. Uh, you know, he stuck in there, especially on that final drive. And then you're right, using his legs. And I think that was something that you and I talked about last week, Andy, yep. is could Jeff Lebby uh, start to open that up a little bit where he could he could use his legs, runs for 113 yards, highest in his career. Uh, I mean, he, he was really, really good at seeing the field open, moving the ball. And, and again, that, that last possession... Uh, just the poise to step up uh, and make those throws. You think of that last throw to Nick Anderson, the game-winning touchdown. I mean, the pocket is collapsing around him. And to, for him to stay in there, keep his eyes in the end zone and find an open guy uh, and make a good throw. It just I think that Dylan won over a, a large portion, if not the entire fan base on Saturday. And, and he, you know, he etched his name in Sooner lore. I mean, he's going to live in Cotton Bowl history forever because of that performance. We'll be right back with more Oklahoma talk with George Story III. But first, I want to tell you about our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the easiest place to find last-minute tickets. Do you want to go to the Washington-Oregon game in Seattle this week? Oh, yeah. Game Time's got your tickets. Do you want to go maybe to Keenan Stadium to watch Miami take on the North Carolina Tar Heels? Beautiful place. You can get in for 100 100 bucks on Game Time. Maybe you want to go to Neyland Stadium. Texas A&M headed to Knoxville to face the Tennessee Volunteers. That one costs you a little more, but you will be in for a party because that place is off the chain when the balls are playing well. Game time allows you to find tickets to all of these games, concerts, comedy shows, you name it. You thought you couldn't get that ticket? Yeah, you can get that ticket with game time. Download the game time app. Redeem the code ROUNDTABLE, R-O-U-N-D-T-A-B-L-E, for $20 off your first purchase. They got it all. If you think you can't get a ticket, you can get it on game time. 
They'll show you exactly where your seat is. You'll know exactly what it's going to look like. Two more taps. That ticket is yours. You can transfer it to friends on game day via text. They make the whole process seamless and easy. So download the Game Time app, redeem the code Roundtable for $20 off your first purchase. Well, it seemed like Levy did a good job of neutralizing Texas's defensive line with tempo, but the other piece of that was Oklahoma's offensive line played really well. It, it didn't feel like Gabriel was under that much pressure, or when he was under pressure, he was able to escape. Yeah, and that was a big talking point coming into this, was could Oklahoma win the line of scrimmage? And I think the stat that was thrown out there is in the last 16 matchups, the team that's run the ball uh, for more yards is 14 and two in the game. And there was a large portion of the the fan base and us media that thought there's no way OU will be able to run the ball, but Oklahoma was the more physical team. I think Dylan Gabriel was sacked only one time and it was, I think it was on a scramble when he just ran out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. And so I, you know, they were really good. They gave him the time and, and we've seen it when Dylan has time back there, he typically makes the right decision. Now he's not always the most accurate at times, but he typically is throwing the ball where it's supposed to go. So the offensive line was really, really good. You know, they, they started a true freshman, uh, Caden Green at left guard, um, and, and he came in and played great on Saturday. They lose McCade Matuire at right guard in the fourth quarter, uh, and they still were able to move the ball. And they, they ran for their second most yards this season against a really good Texas defense. So, yeah, they were able to neutralize that. And then even on the other side, Andy, the defensive line, I don't think anybody saw that coming. That's been a group that... We really haven't seen them flash a lot. They sacked Quinn Ewers five times. That was a huge uh, you know, momentum in, in the game for them to be able to get after him and get some pressure on him. So they were they were the more physical team, which I can't remember the last time you could say that about an Oklahoma team uh, at the Cotton Bowl. So looking forward, this is not the deepest Big 12. There's a really good chance that this is a rematch in the Big 12 championship game. But how, do, how does Oklahoma keep from falling into the trap of saying, all right, we just got to we got to hold serve until we play Texas again. It has to start with your mindset, right? And even after the game on Saturday, you could tell they were celebrating that one and they're going into a bye week, which I think is really beneficial because they can and they should honestly celebrate this victory. It's a monumental step for the program considering where it was a year ago. But I think it's a good rest period for them, one, to get healthy, but two, to kind of reset mentally. And, and I think Brent has talked a lot about Hey, we haven't won anything yet. Six and zero. Oh, you don't get a trophy for being six and zero, oh, right? And and you could even see some of the players after the game saying that, hey, we haven't accomplished anything just yet. And so I think that it has to be that mindset. But you're right, Andy. You look at the schedule. They get UCF at home. They go to Lawrence, which I think is going to be a really yeah, interesting game yeah. the next week. Uh, then you get, I think, West Virginia at home. West Virginia has been sneaky good this year. You got BYU on the road. Uh, you got OSU on the road, Bedlam game, which OSU's coming off a big win over Kansas State, and then TCU at home, which I don't know, I don't know what to make of of TCU, but they're going to be favored in every game from here on out. Uh, it's just keeping that same mindset, that one and zero mindset. You hear that all the time from them, one and zero this week. I think if they can keep that and they can stay relatively healthy, there's no reason they shouldn't be uh, in Arlington playing for the Big Twelve Championship game. New world in Norman, George Stoya. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Andy. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.